Hi, this is Yaffe Lavova, registered dietitian nutritionist with Baby Bloom Nutrition, and I'm a couple minutes late because I got stuck nursing, and I think a lot of you can <laughs> relate to that. So uh, today, by popular request, we're going to be talking about the MTHFR gene mutation, and it, it relates somewhat to family nutrition. It definitely relates to new mom nutrition, new dad nutrition, for that matter. Um, it's just a really big thing right now, so I wanted to talk about it. And first, a short introduction. I own Baby Bloom Nutrition. I do personal and small group counseling for any of the nutrition obstacles that come up from pregnancy through toddlerhood. That includes um, pregnancy, new mom nutrition, colic and fussiness, food allergies, food introduction, general well-being for early family. So, um, so starting to get some people to join. I'm very excited to cover this topic. This is also kind of a, a miniature version of a talk that I'm giving for Medicine Pro, um, medicinetalkpro.org. It's an organization that provides continuing education for naturopaths and now dietitians as well. So if you know anyone who needs continuing education to learn about the MTHFR gene mutation and nutritional implications, let me know. I will direct you to the right place. So first, MTHFR, what is it? Well, it looks like a swear word. We all know that. And for some people dealing with it, it kind of is. You know, you look at it and you see your diagnosis and you're like, mother, but that's not what it stands for. So what does it stand for? Well, I'm gonna say it slowly. MTHFR, methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. This is the enzyme that reduces 510-methyl tetrahydrofolate to 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate or 5-MTHF. And what that means is it's taking an inactive, unusable form of folate and converting it to a type of folate that your body can actually use. And um, so, so what's the big deal? Is it just, is this a fad? Is this like, like some people have celiac, but everyone's going gluten-free now, and now everyone has MTHFR? No. But the truth is that there are over 50 forms of this gene mutation, and 30 to 50 percent of Americans have some form or other. So really, it is a big deal because a lot of people have it. Um, it's not a fad. It's not made up. It can be tested with a blood test, and it's it, and you can find out if you have the gene for the mutation. And I'm going to talk about the difference between whether you have the gene and what does that mean for you if you have it. Um, so first, what is it associated with? Um, there have been a lot of associations between the MTHFR gene mutation and disease states. Multiple miscarriages, GI discomfort, Down syndrome um, has been associated recently with it. A lot of heart disease and inflammatory conditions, cancers, especially breast and colorectal cancers, certain childhood cancers like um, certain um, can certain kidney cancers, certain types have been associated with the MTHFR gene mutation. Cleft lip and palate, and tongue tie and lip tie. I did a whole nap time nutrition on tongue tie and lip tie. It has been fairly strongly associated with the MTHFR gene mutation. And um, so a lot of things, a lot of things are coming up with this particular gene mutation. So what if I have the gene? Okay, so what if you have the gene? Um, a lot of people have been diagnosed after having multiple miscarriages or they get blood panels when they're preparing to conceive or if they have certain GI um, issues and their doctor is pretty progressive and wants to test for this. This is how people are really finding out that they have it. You can do that test 23andMe that breaks down your, your DNA. Um, some people don't think that it's really uh, reliable. I don't know too much about that one specifically, but if you think that you might have the gene mutation, talk to your doctor. So here's the difference between genotype and phenotype. So here, here's your biology lesson, your genetics lesson for the day. Okay, so genotype is like letters in a book, just letters. They don't really mean much when they're just sitting there just letters. Phenotype is the story that the letters tell. So if you have a particular gene, you don't know if that's going to be expressed or not or how it's expressed. So. For example, in my family, we have the gene for blue eyes, which is actually a recessive trait. I'm not going to get into the, how complicated that gets, but I don't have blue eyes. My kids don't have blue eyes. Even my husband has blue eyes, but my kids don't. However, they, their kids might. It's in the family. So this is the difference between 
genotype and phenotype. We have the gene, it's not expressed. So phenotype is genes plus environment. Another example is people are getting tested for the, the BRCA gene, which is for, for breast cancer and other types um, as well. But if you have the gene, you may or may not get breast cancer. You have a higher chance than someone who doesn't have the gene, but there are other factors that play into it. So whether you have the gene or not is one set of information, and if it's going to have an expression is another set of information. So all of that needs to be taken into account. And that's where it comes back to it may not be a big deal because although up to 50% of Americans have a mutation with this particular enzyme, it may not express itself. You may not have any ill health effects from it. It may not be a big deal to you. So what should you do if you find out that you do have this gene mutation and it is affecting your health? Well, it really comes down to two different things, supplements and diet. So what you want to do is, with your supplements, you want to make sure you have the methylated version of different, um, you want to make sure that your B12 is uh, methylcobalamin instead of cyanocobalamin. So look on the label. Most of the times it's going to be cyanocobalamin. You really have to go out of your way to find methylcobalamin. And if you find one with the methylcobalamin, you're going to probably see that the folate version is going to be the methylated folate as well. And that's the other thing that you want to look for. You want to be taking the active form of the folate rather than the inactive form. And that's so that your body can kind of jump past in the cycle that step where you need the enzyme. It's not perfect but um, because it is a cycle, so you are going to come cycle back around and need that enzyme. But chances are, if you have the mutation, then your enzyme is still functioning. It's just not functioning at 100% capacity. Um, I'm getting very technical now. <laughs> uh, another thing you want to do is look at your diet. You want to include foods that are high in folate naturally because while foods that are high in folate are going to have folate that comes before that enzyme in the cycle, they're also going to have the active folate as well. So you want to make sure to get as much of that as possible. That's the biologically active folate, also called the 5-MTHF, which is the active form. And foods that are high in folate are dark leafy greens, asparagus, broccoli, citrus, legumes, um, avocado, okra, Brussels sprouts, seeds and nuts, cauliflowers, beets. That was, oh, I love beets. Everyone love beets? Can I get a thumbs up? Yeah? No, no thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> so the other thing that you want to work on is um, there are some environmental changes that you can really control. Um, reducing your use of plastics, not eating hot food off of plastics, not putting hot things on something plastic. Um, you want to reduce your plastic water bottles, for example. There are certain things you can do to, to reduce. Um, oh, you love beets, especially golden ones. I got my thumbs up. I love golden beets, too. I made borscht with it once, and my husband kind of looked at me like I was crazy because the borscht wasn't red, but it was delicious. Golden beets are so good. Um, anyway... <laughs> You want to try to limit your consumption of pesticides. Uh, if you can't go fully organic, try to look at the, the dirty dozen and stick to that to try to buy organic, to try to reduce your impact uh, that way. And so you really want to look at, look at your supplements, look at your diet, look at your environmental, um, the environmental aspect of your nutrition. And um, that's pretty much how you're going to deal with the MTHFR gene mutation. And the truth is that that advice can be generalized to anybody. So you really don't have to find out if you have it. You could just do those steps. I mean, it's never a bad idea to eat spinach, right? So there you have MTHFR gene mutation. I am really open to a lot of questions on this. Um, it'll help expand my own learning as well. So I look forward to that in the comments. And so you can find me here, Facebook, on Pinterest, pinterest.com slash Yaffe, Instagram, babybloomenutr, and Toddler Test Kitchen is coming up, and our next recipe is chocolate tortillas, which is amazing. It was so good last time. I'm really looking forward to doing it again. So next week on Naptime Nutrition, I'm open to comments. I don't have a topic picked out. So I will see you next week right here on Naptime Nutrition, Baby Bloom Nutrition Facebook Live. And I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks. Bye.